Today I'm welcoming an Olivier Award winning leading lady who's celebrating a full year living in Neverland on Broadway. What's up, Laura Michelle Kelly? Paul, I love you. <laughs> So I love your here. gown. I well, love I, how I like to pretty dress you look. I wore it last night to a band. Oh, you've been, you been out all night? No. <laughs> that would be fun, but no. Can't do that when you're a Broadway. But I did. I watched the Dandy Warhols in this dress. Oh, how was that? The, it was unbelievable. There's an, it's a 90s band. It was bringing me back. Do you like do you like doing this the scene like you're on Broadway and you get invited to other things and do you like to be honest I've never done the scene before this year really and this is a part that's a little less demanding than all the other parts I've played <laughs> <laughs> so when you get invited to this party I can actually go and I yeah. you know it's, yeah. I, I am I'm having a great time yeah. it started with Tony season last year right that was a scene like right. all the luncheons yeah, and you meet lot. people I love lot. meeting people yeah so yeah I'm enjoying this year it's been quite incredible well I adore you and that's why you're here because I actually first <laughs> met you when you were doing Fiddler on the Roof. What year was that? That was like that was 2002. 2002. The last Fiddler on the Roof. Actually, no, 2003. Three. 2003. And you yeah. were incredible. Thank and you. and I remember I just met you at the opening and you were adorable and I fell in love with you and so I'm still in love with you. How are you doing? <laughs> How's Broadway? I'm good. I love it. I'm having a great time. We were in an amazing season. You know, social media's like exploded. Yeah. Periscope's my favorite new thing. You were just on Periscope on the way here in I the cab. <laughs> I was, on, I was on my Twitter and I saw, oh, she's, she's broadcasting live. Because I was I'm so sorry I'm late, late, but let's talk to the fans. It was great. <laughs> I w it was keeping me calm. I thought, if I, at least I'm stuck in a cab for this long, right. then at least I've got to talk to someone. Do you know what I found this year? It's been quite, my favorite thing is talking to strangers and getting to know people from, you know, from the outside, like brand new people. And that's what I'm finding. I'm meeting so many fun, interesting people. Where are you talking to strangers? Tell me about your life. Well, the stage door. Okay, well I talk there's to a lot of people strangers every day. Door. But like, when you have to do like these meet and greets and the luncheons and the press things, and yeah. like, you talk to people you've never met before and you find out new things about yourself and about life. Right. And I, th I think that might be why I'm in a real season of gratitude. Well, but you have that, and you have that warmth. You have that immediate warmth and you talk to people. You know what I mean? So I, I can see that you're, but let's talk about this. So you're in Net Finding Neverland, yeah. big Broadway hit. You guys are about to hit a year, right? Yeah. A year on Broadway. It's actually on uh, Friday. Oh, we're gonna happy anniversary. I think we're going to ce celebrate. But we're also going to celebrate that Alfie Bow and Mark Kudich are, are finally oh, right. announced and in our show. Right. Mark starts today. Right. Mark as, Kudich uh, is playing. Uh, Froman. Yeah, and Hook, maybe. But we don't say that. In the yeah, we don't, it's like a pretend. <laughs> People don't really know that. Look at these leading men you've been able to entertain during your glamorous Someone run in <laughs> Finding Neverland. Someone did a picture of all the me and all the men. I suddenly thought, actually, that is quite strange. Yeah. <laughs> that, A, they would keep me on, which I'm so grateful for, because I love my job. I love it so much. And I have incredible relationships with all my kids, right. my boys that I have in the show. Um, one of whom's just become my godchild, <laughs> unofficially, because <laughs> um, I just don't want to leave them. And I love that they're allowing me to do the transition, that they trust me yeah. with each new man. Yeah. And someone said to me recently, well, for instance, Jeremy Jordan, Boston. Yeah, Jeremy Matthew Jordan, you, I saw you do it with him in Boston. Oh, yeah. Matt Morrison. Morris, Matthew Morrison. Tony Yazbeck. Tony Yazbeck and now Alfie Bow. Now Alfie Bow. And they're that's, that's a nice lineup. So that's that's different. good for an entire career, <laughs> and you got those leading men just on one in one job. I I just I love getting to know someone on stage for the first time. Yeah. And someone said to me, "How are you finding it falling in love with a different guy every night?" Right. But that's what I'm supposed to do every night anyway. Right. You fall in love with someone as if you've never met them before. Right. And 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 then who you get is in sitting in that bench at that time. It could be any one of them, and I'm supposed to react to their version of the story right, and, and yeah. that's what I've learned I've been doing uh, hopefully adjusting myself based on yeah, how they bring it you can't sleepwalk through this job I mean you, you you have to really stay alert when you're like working off a new guy right yeah I mean anytime you're on stage you have to try to stay alert and not do your shopping list while you're singing a song which I used to do in Mary Poppins I was gonna say when you were in Mary Poppins you did Mary Poppins for a long time you won an Olivier Award let's just be very uh, clear in London Olivier Award winning <laughs> actress <laughs> Right here in the gown, yeah. very, very, very fancy British. Although the Olivia Awards now are so much like they're on TV, it's like they're it's like making it such more a like different Tony's. thing. Yeah, I it's think much more like the Tony's. And I think it's going to continue becoming more glamorous. It, it's yeah. more celebrated. It should be something that people celebrate as wildly and as hugely as they do here. Yeah. Um, and I think that they're they're going in that direction. Yeah. Which Was is your speech great. on TV at the time? No. And I remember walking in actually in this little blue dress 
for the first time to the awards. It was in a hotel, it wasn't publicized, but it was still like, yeah. the pressure was so fierce. I remember as I walked in, my eyes started welling up and I was like, I have to leave, I have to leave. And um, I was convinced to stay because I it's suddenly the weight of wow. being in a race you didn't ask to be in and the right. weight of people right. looking at me was too much. And I'm anyway, it turned out to be that I won and I didn't have anything prepared. I didn't know how to prepare for something like that. Right. Um, I think I thanked everybody. <laughs> 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 but that moment when you get announced and you're thrown up there, there's so much pressure. I don't know how they look so elegant at the Tonys. I'm watching all of them in awe, and I'm really glad I wasn't nominated this year because I got to really enjoy myself. You didn't have to like we have that month of all that. I would prefer all that, and right. I, just, I thought this is this is good actually. I get to experience this whole thing, wear a pretty dress, be <laughs> the belle of the ball, and like not have to have any responsibilities right, whatsoever. Right. You have a good uh, sort of like a fan energy about you too. You are really genuinely like a fan of all of this. I'm s I'm as inspired. Well. I never used to be. Yeah. I think I got back in London. I was uh, off the gratitude train a little bit. I like work was just got me down. I didn't rest enough, and I didn't inspire myself by going to the most amazing things and seeing how what everyone else can do right. to be better. Right. And I I got a bit complacent, and since moving to New York, two thousand nine, when I brought I took over Mary Poppins here from the beautiful Scarlett Strahan, right. who I adore. Right. She uh, she was so generous to me. She spent a lot of time with me, telling me what it's like to be on like in this role on Broadway, and that was when it started my inspiration again. And this kind of sisterhood, like with mm. other Broadway leading ladies, and mm -hmm. just a passion for culture, started again when I was here. Right. It There's also started at the Muni. I went to the Muni and. Man, that changed my life. Michael Isaacson. You did. How you did South Pacific. I did South Pacific and, and, King, and King and I there. Right. King and I. I would love to see you do the King and I. Me you should do that. Would you want to do it here? You should do it. Come on. That, that's I nice. wish I could. You know, Marin Massey's doing I know, it after Kelly O'Hara. I wish I'd seen but her. But then do. somebody else is going to have to do it. I mean, you know, I mean, come on. I would love, I would to, love to. to. And you're actually British. All those little kids. No fake, no fake British accent here. But all those little children. Like, that would be. <laughs> like, there's so many of them. Yeah, it would be so great, great to work with. I do. It's because so I'm wait. not a mum yet. I would love to be a mum and I'm vicariously living through all these parts I'm playing. So wait, you know how when Americans go to England to live in London, they start getting those faux accents, right? You yeah, know this. Yeah, you know yeah. the Americans who start talking like Madonna. Like, I'm not, you know, yes, I'm not going to list any other celebrities, but that's one of them. Does the same thing happen? Th but you're not talking like an American. And you live in Brooklyn, don't you? My family say that I've, I sound American. My really? agent it, from England, Simon Beresford, he always says, you're sounding American on the phone. What do you think? What like what kind of things are you saying? Butter, saying? water. Okay. I have to say that no one else, no one really knows what I'm asking for at diner. Right. <laughs> like, I, can I get some butter, please? Butter. Right, butter. They like what is that you're saying? <laughs> so I, ha I started there, okay. and then mm, I, I think just being around Americans, you just and you do have to play American part, audition for American parts. Right. <laughs> so you can pull it off. Uh, yeah, I try. Like when I was doing South Pacific, I had to do an Arkansas accent in. Right. Um, in what front of 12,000 like? people. It suddenly it dawned on me one night that I'm going to be in front of 12,000 people. The likelihood that they're going to judge me is big. So <laughs> at least one or two of them is it. Let's rewind. <laughs> Let's take you. I want to go back to the farm. Let's go back. back. Right, right, way, way back. Farm girl. I, I grew go up way milking cows. I want to go way back. I want to hear the story. I want to hear the story of LMK. I, I, well, we moved to the, the farm when it was, you know, I was very young, like, seven uh -huh. and so my whole life I remember just the farm really we grew up with chickens I would go collect the eggs every morning I remember having so many guinea pigs you couldn't count because <laughs> they just kept breeding um, <laughs> and they were all kept in a, a, ca a cage outside on the grass in the summer and then inside in the porch in the, right. the winter and we had lambs that we reared wow little lamb little lamb did you sing gypsy songs to no, your little I lamb no <laughs> i didn't know that you should have that been great <laughs> but on the farm it was the first i i we would sing every sunday in church old-fashioned church with boring yeah. songs like da, 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 da. old-fashioned songs hated them and then but that's probably where i learned how to learn a song quickly because you would have to sing right. old people right. songs 
and then catch it by the second and by the eighth verse yeah. <laughs> you knew what they were. I used to get told off for singing too loud. My grandmother was the one that actually first introduced me to music because we were on the farmhouse and it was like a, a farm walk away to hers. Uh -huh. And I would make this little trail journey to her house. She was part of this membership program. You could listen to her one CD a week a new oh, right. musical okay, a week yeah. and then there was a, a magazine that would come out and tell you all about the show and oh, I'd, never, wow. I'd never seen anything like it before so I was fascinated by what is this show stuff. So it was Broadway, it was musicals. It was Broadway, West End, it was, it was wow. just part of this package, it, I don't know, it was so beautiful. This That's Every crazy. week I, I would show up at her house and I would listen to the CD that arrived and read the magazine about that show. Yeah. And I, that's why I can know about some obscure old fashioned shows. But um, my favorite. Some of those that you like, fell in love with? Uh, my favorites were always Angela Weber and Cameron McIntosh shows. Always. And I remember being on my grandma's carpet listening uh, to these songs over and over again. Obviously, no computers, nothing. I had an audio tape that I would record the CD to the tape, take the tape home, and I would stop and start until I'd written every single lyric out. You wrote it all out. And wow. once I learned it completely, wow. I would show Imagine it to if you my had the mom. internet, it would have been a whole different world. <laughs> <laughs> what would you have done with all that time? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I used to do that too, right? So yeah, you until too. you hit the pause on the cassette. Did you ever do it to Celine Dion too? No. <laughs> no. I did Celine Dion too. <laughs> Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, because those are the pop you know, people in my age. Right, right. And I was learning those songs at the same time and then... Um, so wait, so how did that girl end up auditioning for what, Beauty and the Beast? Well, you did some shows in school, right? So I went from the carpet in my grandmother's room right. to um, auditioning for a local theatre group because my youngest brother, Nathaniel, he also, he could sing, he still can, he sings yeah, like an angel. Yeah, your, your siblings are... All my family right? are creative. Right, everyone's like a singer. My youngest brother, Joram, he's an R&B songwriter. Oh, wow. He lives in New Orleans. My middle brother, he's like a youth worker and sings every Sunday. And my, um, <laughs> my dad, <laughs> my dad's a nutter and I love him. He, I'm exactly like him. And uh, <laughs> he writes the craziest songs. So he's like got this poetry, poetic wow. mind and huh. he's totally ADD like me. Wow. And we, we're just all very creative yeah, yeah. and in different, totally yeah, different yeah, yeah. ways. Yeah. Um, so you started doing, s and then you did like Bugsy Malone. Oh, right? Well, I auditioned for Bugsy Malone in school and I okay. didn't get it. And I remember okay. that was my biggest disappointment uh, because I'd been doing like local theater and, and I didn't get to Lula in Bugsy Malone. And I so sorry for being, that was that. my first disappointment. Thank you. Yeah, it was a just <laughs> disturbing time. But no, from there, I auditioned for a show. Oh, Barbara Walters was my uh, yeah, an opera singer. I'm going to talk about Barbara Walters. Barbara Walters, <laughs> the English version. Uh, yeah, there's like a, it's your singing she's teacher. She's my singing right? teacher. Barbara she was Walters. a retired opera singer. Not the Barbara Walters. That you not know. Not Barbara Walters. <laughs> so she retired to the Isle of Wight and she moved a house away from us. And she found out that I needed a, so she was like, I want to teach you. And we didn't have the money. So she taught me for free. And I would go there once a week, every week. And it's just uh, more than that sometimes, hang out at her house after school, and we would just sing for fun. And she always said to me, and this is unusual for opera singers, uh, opera teachers, I think, that you know you can sing anything you want to. You don't have to stick within the genre of opera. But I was, we always worked on Maria Callas songs together. I was so mm. young though, couldn't sing them properly. Um, but we would work on everything and we would sing for fun. Uh, and she just taught me technique, which has helped me survive. Mm. And that she got me to a top E, which is why I got Beauty and the Beast so young. I was oh, 16 wow. and I could sing a top E. Wow. And that was one of the important things for Marie the Baguettes, which was my, <laughs> I was Marie the Baguettes, hurry up. That was what? my <laughs> character in, in the ensemble. I and you covered Belle too. I did, I, I ended up understudying Belle, the second okay. understudy, so you yeah. didn't get on really. But I heard that they offered you the role of Belle and you, did, you turned it down, is that true? No, they offered me first understudy from second understudy. Oh. And I got angry because they wouldn't offer me the same pay as I knew the other girl had been on. And I got self-righteous about it. So I <laughs> said no. And at the time, like, if you look back, like, of course I should have taken it. Right. But because I didn't, I, I was, like, super cocky. Because I didn't, I got whistled on the wind in wow. Andrew's show. You were living and you moved to the West. You moved to London. When I was 16. When you, with, without your family. To me, that at the time, I was like, yeah, why wouldn't I? And you just became I a West End. I go camping all the time. I can do this. You just became a West End performer and you were just living with roommates, right? Eventually living with roommates, which, uh, yeah, there was five of us in the house at one time. 
were you very in control or did you kind of go crazy because you were suddenly in London or you just very I focused like on the work and the every every night at GAY with the whole cast of Beauty and the Beast. That's that's the, the big gay club on, on yeah. Old Compton's, right? I was underage. <laughs> oh, and, and I snuck you in. I, it was like I was listening to divas and dancing. And was that, was that like suddenly you had gay friends and you didn't? I'd I'm never had a gay friend before <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Actually, unbeknownst to me, I did. The guy that is solely two men that are solely responsible for me doing all the local theatre. I did Tony Wright and David Redstone. They blessed and changed my life forever. It was a youth, it was a six year period, I think, where it existed wow. that I was inside and able to do all the magic of the musicals. Every day after school, yeah. uh, after lessons, whatever, I would go to the theater and we would do every show that we could, every part in every show. I mean, they created this atmosphere for a whole bunch of teenagers to yeah. entertain everyone and in the resources, we had this huge theater that yeah. we always filled out every, Gay. I thank them for that, but I want to talk about gay. Let's go back to GA. Tony Wright. I didn't so, uh, know he was gay. So tell me about these big nights. But Absolutely. I didn't know so he Beauty was. Beauty the Beast, curtain comes down, you go out with the salt and go pepper the shaker gay to the gay club. <laughs> yeah. Underage girl. Yeah. And just hitting the town hall and, and dancing. And, and I was, this whole world opened up to me that I didn't know about. And um, But then I got whisked down the wind and got sensible. I, and I knew okay. I was taking this responsibility seriously. And I never went out. I lived like a grandma. So you were only crazy during Beauty and the Beast. That, that, was, the yeah. that was the crazy period. And this year, yes. <laughs> then and this year. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Which brings me to, you're creating a club act, <laughs> aren't you? You're actually doing Fit Before Below. The first time, I've wanted to do this for years. Like it, Ever since Beauty and the Beast, people were like, oh, you should do a night at such and such, whatever it was in West End. And you had an album. You had like a pop album, right? I did. You did? Like, yeah, you did. You had a big pop I'm album. actually singing a couple of those songs, actually, but in a different yeah? way. Oh, cool. It's like... I, I'm doing a one night thing, a, a, a one woman thing, with maybe Alfie Bo and or a couple of other people. Um, nice. I'm doing that at Fine Scenes Fifty Four Below, and right. I am scared. Is that terrifying? I, I don't know why I'm so terrified about it, but I have been because it's taken me so long to do it. Yeah. That it's become a big deal, but uh, it just is the right timing. I finally am comfortable uh -huh. with. I think hitting thirty made me comfortable with who I am. Yeah. I still think I'm gonna like, you know, anyone that shows up on May 2nd. That's the they're first They're gonna, the they're gonna three, get right? a nervous Laura, but I'll do my best. <laughs> 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 and I'm practicing so that I'm not nervous, but um, I want it to be fun, you know? I want people to come along and leave happier. Yeah. That's, that's all I really want in life. I just want to make people happier. Well, give me like a couple songs we're gonna get to well, see. Just now we were singing, everybody says don't. And uh, I sang that recently yep. at um, an LGBT supporting night. What was that night? Were you there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I sang it there, and yeah. I really love that song because it great song. says a lot about, you know, people tell you you can't do it or right. you can't be good enough or, you yeah. know, I really like that song. Right. So I'm going to do that into. I, I want to keep that second part as a surprise. I'm doing a couple of songs from the album that are in a different way. Cool. And with Joshua Stephen Carter's is so amazing. He's such a genius. So I'm excited to hear what he does with them. I'm doing a different version of All That Matters for mm. the fans. Yes, nice. Um, but also the night's called All That Matters because I feel like, you know what, what does matter? Let's still talk about it. And, yeah. and this is what home is about, about what matters. So yeah, I'm excited if people come. I don't know what's, I how it's to gonna. Come. I'm definitely gonna be there. I just have to ask you because I'm a big fan of it. Sweeney Todd, you're in the Sweeney Todd movie. What an amazing, it's a great movie. Event that, ha that happened. And that's such a, um, it's such a great movie musical because I feel like a lot of Broadway fans, I feel like, don't necessarily like it because it's, it's so much veers more towards horror. It's so bloody. I didn't know that it was going to turn into a more of a horror than it. It's so bloody. I, I love didn't it. even Tim imagine. Burton. But it's so funny that it wasn't even in my mind that there would be blood and guts and I get right. my throat cut and all that stuff. I right. didn't, all I was so you excited You knew you were going to die. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know that, like, I, I couldn't have imagined, like, when I was on set and there was this, like, machine with all the disgusting feet and that, that looks so real, I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I in? You mean there's a machine? There was, like, a grinding meat machine. Oh, right. <laughs> they had they everything realistic. They weren't actually realistic. grinding people up, were they? No, but it looked like the real thing. <laughs> it looked like real people. It was so awful. Anyway, so... But that was quite something well, that happened to me, being able to meet Johnny Depp and him play my husband. 
Yeah, Man. hello. That's pretty amazing. Was he like in character on the set all the time? Was no. he like walking around as we Sweeney? Were all, I'd, we'd come in at like 5 a.m. to get ready and we finally got to the set around 10 and he showed up in his normal outfit. We were all ready to go, but he hadn't even got ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember seeing him look like his normal self. And then the next second I saw him and we'd never run the scene. Right. It's not like musical theatre at all. Right. No rehearsal. Right. They're, all they're doing is running okay you go here you go here you go here you go here this is for the cameras they don't and you don't even run the lines once with the person right in that world right i mean for my experience so that was so super scary and i remember the first scene that i'm in with him i have a real baby but the, for some of the scenes i have a fake baby and i think <laughs> one of them must have been really antique fake baby because in the middle of the scene i'm like ah, and then i break the baby's <laughs> leg the fake baby. The fake baby. I was like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> you know, like, it's quite obvious I've ruined the scene by <laughs> breaking this. And you could hear it. I was like, so I had to do, there's lots of things that I hadn't, couldn't, right. I had to learn on the spot. I mean, the first time that Johnny came in and I'm dressed as the beggar woman, I'm like looking hideous. Um, he comes in. No one told me that I had to say my lines off camera. To him okay so he's looking at me and the whole room goes quiet and and he's still just acting and acting and then and I was like shit I'm supposed to say something <laughs> <laughs> I'm just totally in it <laughs> and uh, no one told me it's like sh surely you should know you have to do your line now I was like oh it's his turn to do his shot I anyway but. that was my first experience so anyway cut he goes back out comes back in again and then we've never run the lines before together and it was awesome. What, what was dying like? I mean, you have like a gruesome death scene. To, have you I'll, watched it? I'll you tell you. It? I'll tell you what it was like. I when they slit my throat, I remember looking down, and it was like a prosthetic neck. So they slit your throat, and then I'm looking down, and there's blood dripping all down my outfit. Um, and then the next scene, I, I'm in a cave with him in the basement. Yeah. And Johnny is bleeding in and. Tim wanted the blood in my nose and in my eyes and right. in my ears. Right. He wanted it, that. like the image of just me being covered in this his blood. <laughs> that was, I felt like I was drowning in blood. I'm I sure. actually was, and I had to keep my breath, and he was doing the slowest pan out. <laughs> it, you'll see it at the <laughs> end of, so I had to hold my breath dead with the blood in my eyes and my ears and my mouth, and I think at one point, I choked and I think I spat blood in Johnny Depp's face. <laughs> but he's such a gentleman, he didn't say anything. <laughs> but that was probably the worst day for Who me. Who else can say they've spat blood in Johnny <sighs> Depp's face? But he was also super sweet because he was like, do you want water, do you need a cushion? Like, He was doing that, like, pff, he's such a, a great guy. Yeah, yeah, he was great. And so yeah. was Tim and Helena, we got our makeup done every day together. and. She was so thoughtful and kind. I want to do a film again. I just, I think when I come next time, I'll be a bit more prepared. Do you consider yourself a New Yorker now? Do um, you consider yourself going to the West End? I, or? I consider myself an immigrant. Okay. <laughs> a gypsy. I immigrate, I emigrated from England. You're an immigrant. Okay. I mean, I would, I would take a, a, an exciting job anywhere in the world. And I think that we're in the, we're in this generation where we can do that. Um, but I do have my green card and I consider New, or New Orleans as my home. Right. Because my folks live there. M two of my brothers live there. Wow, okay. Um, my, um, m I have one brother left in England, but I consider that New Orleans my home. Wow, okay, my I didn't know that. Are. Yeah, because my dad met my stepmom yeah. uh, online dating uh, oh, 10 really? years ago. Oh, really? They met online? Ago. Yeah, before FaceTime and Skype and everything. And she changed all of our lives. And she's actually from Louisiana. Um, oh. And so they moved there and... So dad fell in love with a, with a good, proper southern lady. She's incredible. Yeah. Best thing that ever happened to us. Awesome. And the Finding Neverland family is important to you. I know those kids. You're obsessed with those kids. I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's not like, okay, Mary Poppins flies in, teaches the family a lesson, and then she flies out again. And those kids were also super incredible, and I love them. But I have... Being someone's mum on stage, mm -hmm. it's like nothing else if I can't have them in real life I'm like gonna steal them in, <laughs> in right. the show <laughs> right. they're just so fantastic these little kids these, they're growing up to be incredible men 
Yeah. Well, I could talk to you forever, but we, we ran out so of time. Much we could talk about. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for wearing <laughs> a gorgeous you. dress. Everyone needs to see Finding Neverland at the Lundfontein Theater. And there's new, there's new guys. There's new, new guys, guys all the time. New version. You're Same beautiful love it. lady. New guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.